Welcome to another episode of the Ripple Effect Podcast. I am your host, Steve Harper. If you are tuning in via YouTube and you're seeing this on the video, you're probably like, hey, this is a different angle for you. Yeah, it is. We are in the process of redoing our studio. You can kind of get an idea in the background. Uh, we've got some brick in the back. And uh, so things are a little bit disorganized right now. So um, I just set it down and set the new camera down and just decided, you know, hey, put it at this angle. All right. So hopefully it's okay. Uh, you could see me from the side. Maybe it's better than seeing this face on. I don't know. Uh, but this is a solo episode. I have a desire to pepper some solo episodes amongst these amazing, amazing guests that I've got. I tell you what, we have come out of the gate on fire, on fire this year with some incredible guests already. Most recently, Melissa Knowles. That episode, I guarantee you, is people are loving it. I mean, they just love her enthusiasm. They love her energy. And they love the fact that I actually rippled my way to her and stayed persistent about trying to get her on the show. She is super famous. And as, or if you listened to that episode or saw the video uh, with the episode, you see she's high energy. She's so much fun. This is what really attracted to me to having her on the show in the first place because she's just such a good, good person. So I really feel like as I continue to do these things, I am, I almost feel like I am doing something mischievous because I'm getting to meet so many cool people that are doing such amazing things out there in the world. And I'm getting to like talk to them. I'm getting to learn from them. I'm getting to have these you know, really intimate conversations. And of course I bring that to you guys, but I'm the one who gets it first, right? And so I feel just like a million bucks. I mean, Melissa and I have actually, you know, messaged a few times since the episode and I feel like she and I are going to be friends. And, you know, she is someone that I, I just have really been inspired and have admired uh, just like Lark Meadow and all of my guests, right? You know, this has been one of those amazing opportunities to meet some amazing people. Jim Brissacher, who came on the show doing incredible work for education. She's volunteered some time to record some sessions for our school leadership ripple. These people don't have to do this. These people don't even have to respond to me. Like I am a nobody in the grand scheme of things. And yet they are so gracious and so kind and so friendly and just so insightful. It is, it really blows me away. And it's actually part of what I want to talk about today, which is how, how these online communities do lead us to have opportunities to meet some of these amazing people, right? And Cynthia Berg and I, Cynthia runs my community, The Pond, which is one of these online communities you can come check out and be a part of. Uh, RippleCentral.com forward slash pond, P-O-N-D. Uh, if you're not already a member, come join us. It is a unique, fun experience designed to help people find a different approach to connecting, get some of the Ripple goodness that we're creating out there with some of our amazing content, and really create an environment of people that really want to connect on a deeper, more authentic level. And I'm starting to really see that ball start to pick up momentum. I had a conversation this week with someone who's fairly new to the pond who reached out to someone that had made a post. They set up a Zoom and they were like, Steve, I cannot believe that you brought this person into my life. Well, I didn't immediately bring it into their life. They're, you know, they're in the pond. They sort of took the initiative. I would have, of course, made the introduction and they asked me, but they didn't need to because the tools that we've created within this online platform has made it so simple. They reached out with their own digital handshake. They reached out and said, hey, I saw your post. I really you know, admire your honesty and, and your, your approach to explaining what's going on. And uh, hey, if you'd like to jump on a Zoom call or jump on a phone call, let's do it. And they did. These people aren't in the same town. They're not even in the same region. And yet they are rippling. And that is, I think, one of the big beautiful things about these social platforms Obviously, I'm partial to the pond. I'm partial to what we're creating with that. We have this connect and grow coaching membership that we've created, this connect and grow ripple coaching membership. 
I should say, should say it right. That would be helpful. And that's a, a deeper dive, a more intimate dive, but we're still creating community there. We're creating an avenue for our members to get to know each other, to actually say, this is somebody I want to know more about. This is somebody that I might want to try and add some value to their life, their work. And I want to connect on a deeper, more authentic level, right? And I love that because that is so much better in my opinion. And I, I am, I'm open to admitting that I could be wrong. Hang on a sec. I got to take a, a quick coffee break. I am in the empire business. Uh, if you've seen my videos before, you know this mug very well. This is my Breaking Bad mug. Uh, Walter White. I'm in the empire business. Say my name. Say my name. It's Steve. Ripple guy. Yeah, that's my name. I'm in the ripple business, Walter. That's what I'm in. And right now I'm in the coffee drinking business. Oh, what am I drinking, you might ask? Yes, I'm drinking some Italian roast a name that I cannot pronounce, but it's delicious. It's delicious. All right, back to regular schedule of programming here. So talking about why I am so committed to these platforms or this platform that we're creating, but I also look out at the other platforms that are out there and I feel like they miss, right? They, they miss on a lot of levels like Facebook. Yes, you can have groups you, and we've tried that, right? You know, there, there's just so much noise on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. I mean, you really have to be very specific about what you're looking to do, but it is possible, right? And, and when you think about it, if you're thinking about trying to grow your business or you're trying to book a podcast guest or you are just trying to get exposure to new ideas, new thoughts, get new data points, right? You can leverage these online communities to really help you grow in whatever area you might need to grow in. And when I think about my business, what I've been able to do is leverage the value of these social platforms to start the connection. But it really takes me to kind of nudge that along to say, look, you know, I can like your stuff online. I can retweet it or re-exit or whatever the hell we're calling that today. Uh, you know, I can try and send you a Facebook friend request or I can try and connect with you on LinkedIn. You, you guys have heard this over and over again. I hate those, what I kind of kind of consider the poser behavior, but that the platforms make it super easy to do it, right? So I'm not taking that away from anybody. I just don't like it. I'm, I don't want to like reach out to somebody like Melissa, as an example. I don't want to reach out to her and immediately try and connect with her on LinkedIn. A, I believe that she should protect her business network and I should protect mine. Not that you would ever do anything you know, negatively towards my network, but we don't know that, right? We, we need to establish a baseline. We need to get to know each other. We need to have the digital handshake. We need to then turn that into a conversation. And then we need to sort of be willing to come to the table and express what our real interest is in the reach out, the connection. And I think that's part of the problem. I get these LinkedIn invitations all the time. Hey, look at the connect. I see we know people together. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. I've made videos on this, right? It is, I look at these people as like, dude, you don't really, you, you, you're not bringing any value to me in what, in any way, shape or form. What is the purpose, right? Just spamming people? No, it's not, you know, the best way to do it. And so when I think about what you've got to do to be intentional, the various communities that you belong to, whatever those social or online platforms might be, you have to have a game plan. You have to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to put in the work. I, I recorded a podcast interview this week with someone that I've been following, gosh, I want to say from really probably mid-year last year. And I follow her on X, Twitter, whatever. And I just like her positive enthusiasm. It's how I connected with Jim Brissacker. It's how I've connected with Laura Williamson. It's how I've connected with a number of people. I pay attention and I watch, but I don't immediately just say, oh, here's somebody with a really interesting take. They need to come on the podcast or they need to be part of my community or I need them to record a masterclass. And when you think of all those things, those are solving a need for me, not solving a need for them. And so what I did was I, I, I was very intentional and purposeful in terms of how I reached out to this person 
And there was no ask. There was no, you know, expectation. I didn't really even know if they would respond to, you know, my tweet or my DM. And they did. And, you know, it was really interesting because this person is like, you know, I, and they've got thousands of followers. And here's this person that you would look at, or at least I look at through the lens of someone that it seems to be very, very successful and very, has it all figured out. And she's like, man, I, I feel like I, I just put these things out there and nobody pays attention. I'm like, really? I mean, why would you feel like that? You know, when you got retweets, you got you know, people liking it, nobody engages. Nobody does what I did, which is to reach out and just say, I, I just want to say how much I appreciate your daily tweets. I, I want to say how much I enjoy what you put out there and that you are creating a positive ripple out there in the world. Now, did I do this for some secret reason to try and noodle my way in there with her? No, I did it because I was being authentic. I was being truthful, I was being real. But that digital handshake that I went out and I, I made, she reciprocated it. And even though she didn't know that I was following her, and even though she didn't really, really probably go like, what's going on with this guy? I don't, you know, I don't trust everybody. It's the internet. I, I don't blame you. She still took the time to respond, showed a willingness to explore. And rather than try and, you know, really do anything other than to just say how much I enjoyed her content. And I made the ask. And the ask was this, what can I do to create some positive ripples from you? She's like, you're already doing it. You're already retweeting my stuff. When you see it, you've probably brought a number of new followers to me. She said, but you know, I, I, I love the fact that you took the time to just tell me what I'm doing is important to you. And so there was a bit of curiosity on her part about my work. And she's like, looking at your website, it looks like we have some things in common. Like, I mean, we do. I mean, it's like, I, I knew that. I just didn't want to be obvious about it, you know, but I think we'd be simpatico on so many levels. And she said, I checked out your podcast and I, I really love it. And I said, well, I'd love to invite you on sometime. I'd love to, you know, have a conversation about that. If that would ever be of interest, if it would help further your message, get the word out because you're that good. She's like, well, we have a zoom. And again, these things go from zero to a hundred so quick, but keep in mind, I didn't do it because I wanted her on the podcast. Yes. If that turned out to be the case, great. I didn't do this because I expected her to come into our community, the pond. If that turns out to be the case, great. I did it because I'm seeing great authentic people out there in the world that I want to surround myself with. I want to be inspired by. I want to promote them in some capacity. And if we never get on a call again, or we never, you know, have a conversation or she never joins the community, never does our podcast, never acknowledges me again, I'm still going to do it. Right. And that's how I know the difference between marketing and trying to like pitch and sell my business and laying down the foundation for a more profitable connection and potentially a future relationship. Does that make sense? The, the reality is, is that this isn't a marketing tactic, but it does have results. It does help you figure out who you really want to surround yourself with and the kinds of content that is important to you. And if you can ripple that on through retweeting or sharing it with your network or connecting with that individual, all the better, all the better. So anyway, back to this story. We get back, you know, we get some time scheduled and we get on a Zoom. And I'll be honest, she got on the Zoom. She was a little, all right, well, you know, you seem super kind and friendly online. Now I'm waiting for you to pull off the mask, you know? And I didn't, you know, I, I showed up to that call with no preconceived agenda, meaning I know what I wanted to learn from her, right? So I did have a plan, but I didn't have an ask. I wasn't going to pitch. I wasn't going to say anything that said, oh, okay, Steve's got an ulterior motive here. I see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just like all the other posers out there. Didn't do that. When we got on the call and she was, you know, a little bit, let's just say resistant to 
Is this thing going on and off in my background? I don't know why it's doing that. Sorry, hang on. Let me turn on, turn this off. It's probably not a good scene for me to have sharks circling behind me. That's probably not the imagery I want either. <laughs> so anyway, I got something weird going on with the cabling. I don't know why it just keeps popping in and out of the screensaver. But alas, I figured out. I will figure it out. When she's kind of, you know, a little bit suspicious about what my motivations were and what I was doing. And so, like I do with all good connections, I try to make her feel comfortable. I tried to do my best to let her know that I had no preconceived notions. And I, I generally start it that way by like, hey, look, I, I'm not coming here to pitch you anything. I'm not coming here to ask you anything. You know, I am just genuinely interested in getting to know you. And there was this shift. We were on Zoom, so I could see it, right? There was this shift from anxious and uncomfortable to, okay, a little bit more at ease, but let's see if this holds true. And then by asking, as you would know I would, some ripple connection questions to get a better sense of who she is, what she is focused on relative to her business, where her biggest challenges might be that I could maybe help, you know, help with in some capacity, how I could tune my attention to any opportunities that might benefit her. We really got down quick to, you know, background history, where she has been with her business, where she is now, why she's super confident and excited about where she's going. And she was super, super open. Next thing I know, she's almost asking me, I would love to be a guest on your podcast at some point. Not to promote my work, but just because I just think we have this good energy and this good vibe. And it's like, that's what I love about these opportunities. And whether you're carrying forward a podcast or you are trying to build your personal or professional brand, your company brand, whatever, it comes down to your ability to connect with another human being. And the digital handshake may start the process. But what really accelerates your success, your personal satisfaction, maybe even your business growth is how you show up to those conversations focused on learning what you can about the people that are showing up with you. And I think that's probably one of the things that I, I look at is when I come full circle back to this podcast and I think of all the what we'll call digital handshakes that I've made out there they've actually turned into digital hugs. They've turned into this amazing interaction. And I'm not gonna lie, there have been some that have really gone from, you know, this really comfortable, engaged conversation that may have materialized in a podcast episode or might've materialized in somebody agreeing to do a masterclass for my community or, or somebody just coming out of the blue and just saying, dude, I, I need more of what you got. I need some of that in my business and I need to find some time to, you know, maybe do more of this, engage conversation and, you know, where those relationships go, how they uh, unfold in, you know, what the business possibilities are, those things will, those things will come out in time. But what I've actually found is over the course of the last, I'm going to call it one to two years my ability to connect with these people and to make people want to get to know more about me by showing that I'm really genuinely interested in who they are. I'm not interested in their fame. I'm not interested in their success. I'm not interested in their customer list. I'm not trying to get some sort of angle. I am just Steve Harper trying to connect with you. I'm trying to expand the amount of cool people that I have in my life. People that I can potentially you know, create a genuine friendship with people that I could potentially create a referral of opportunity for people that, you know, at the end of the day may somehow magically seem to tell me things that they won't tell their closest allies about their struggles, their frustrations, their insecurities. They're like, holy crap, I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing and have no idea what I, I'm doing. I talked to a TEDx speaker that we featured uh, last year and this person and I have become really good friends really quickly. And we got on a call one day because they were super frustrated with something that had occurred. And they're like, dude, you, you seem like a guy that would, would know what to do next. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're like famous. I'm not famous, but the problem and the challenge that they were dealing with, it wasn't insurmountable. It was figure outable. 
And it was something that, you know, by us getting on the phone, talking it out and me sharing a few ideas and strategies, it was like, we went from here to here, right? You know, like we went from, you know, level two friendship to probably 10. It was, I, I, I felt like I was a part of a rocket ship taken off. It, it, it all of a sudden was just this amazing engagement from this person who you think on the surface would have it all figured out. And they're like, I don't trust anybody. I really have no resources. I don't know who to ask these things to. And just by being there and listening and being a good confidant for them and just sharing a few ideas, they're like, you were probably one of the most genuine people I've met in forever. And I'm not saying these things because I'm tuning my own horn. I'm saying when I show up with no agenda, I'm here. I'm here to learn. I'm here to teach if I can. I'm here to coach and guide if you need it. I'm here to pick you up and inspire you if necessary. But man, I am here because I want to be around somebody like you. It goes from zero to 100 quickly. And those are the things that I am, am absolutely loving. When I look at the core value of what I've done with my business network over the past, we'll call it 18 to you know 36 months, it blows my mind. It blows my mind at the quality of people that I have. I mean, uh, you people that have talked to presidents, people that have been responsible for major military decisions, people that have bought and sold, you know, you know, million dollars of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of companies people that are out there on the cutting edge of technology that I would never have been exposed to people that are amazing, gifted, talented artists, people that are uh, in the know on social media, people that are in the know on digital marketing, people that are in the know on how to get a, a, a movie made in Hollywood, how to get an album made in Nashville. These are all things that I have gotten exposure to. People that went from major media that are now moving towards, you know, you know, educating the next generation of journalists. Carol Costello, that's a shout out to her. Lynn Smith, helping brands and organizations, you know, really understand the, the, the news business and how to get your exposure there. Jeffrey Davis, you know, best-selling author on the power of, of wonder, right? You know, uh, you know, you're finding your inner genius. You know, Andrea Scheer, you know, Lo uh, Lori Wagner, these amazing just muses. And I feel like at any time I can email them and say, hey, I'm, hey what's going on? You know, we're, let's get, jump on a call. Let's, you know, let's, let's engage in some level. And they respond. When I think about that, I think about how it all started with an electronic connection, how these tools and resources that are out there have given us the ability to bridge the connection in a way that we never could have maybe even 10 years ago. And just how hungry even these subject matter experts, these famous people, these trendsetters are in engaging the conversation with just little old me. That to me is powerful. That to me is an example of the ripple, the ability for us to connect, to engage, to do things together, but most importantly, the friendships that I've been able to make. The, I can't take credit for this, right? You know, at the end of the day, I, I look at people like Tim Ferriss, really amazing entrepreneur who I've yet to meet, who I've yet to be able to interview, but I hope I can one day. You know, one of the best things he did was he got a master class from all these people that he went and interviewed for his two books, you know, Tools of the Titans and his other book escapes me right now, but they're just like these solid books, like of great advice from really well-known actors and business, you know, successful business entrepreneurs and you know, all different types of walks of life represented, but you pick up a nugget here and a nugget there and when you look at the value of what you're getting when you do this and, and he did this and put it into book form, I'm doing it and putting it onto podcast form and you guys, I do it for you, but I really do it for me and the ripple effect that I get back, right? The ripples that come back to me are I have this net worth of amazing connections in my network and people that, I don't just want to say I interviewed once and I won't talk to again. 
These are people that I genuinely have affection for. These are people that I genuinely want to get to know about more about, and I want to build more authentic relationships with. And that's what I love about this process. And so, you know, as people come into this arena and they look at these different platforms, you know, I get asked all the time, what are your favorites? Gosh, that's, that's a hard one because my favorite right now is the pond. <laughs> and so the pond, if you go to ripplecentral.com forward slash pond, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mainly because that's my playground. That's the place that I can encourage and guide people to leverage the power of the ripple effect for betterment, for good, right? To practice our ability to connect, to practice our ability to start a conversation, to take a topic, a subject, and actually spin it into the community to have conversation, not to debate it and not to like, oh, you're wrong and right and blah, 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 what you see on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, to do it in a respectful, authentic way. That's it. That's my pitch. I do like Facebook. I'm on Facebook, you know, I actually got to say I'm on it less and less these days. You know, how and why they show the posts that you make to just a subset of your people. I, I know there are these gamification tricks that people are like, oh, you take your thing and copy it on your post and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden it opens. I don't know about any of that crap. To me, it seems super spammy. I have no idea. The way I look at it is this. Facebook is for friends, people that you would consider friends. I mean, Stinky Pete from third grade, do we really need to know each other? I don't know, maybe, right? You know, he could be a CEO of a major company these days. If you don't connect with him on there, you won't know. But the reality is that we have this, I think the vast majority of us use Facebook as a, a place to hoard our friends. Like, hey, I met this guy and I'm a Facebook friend of him and you know, I'm not gonna put any effort towards him. I think Facebook's value to me can be different for you. Facebook's value to me really is the ability to quickly go and just catch up on what people are doing. And honestly, the biggest value that I get from it is tracking everybody's birthdays. That's when people's birthdays are going on. I mean, I have a lot of friends and a lot of people I want to, you know, certainly, you know, wish them a happy birthday. They, they do the same for me when it's my birthday and I'm very appreciative of it, but that's sometimes the only time I ever talk to any of those people. Right. And that's kind of sad, but it also does give me the ability to say like, should I be doing something different here? Like when I see their birthday wishes to me or I make a birthday wish to them, is this someone that I should be investing a little more time and effort towards? Um, it does give me that opportunity. I, t I talk about that all the time. You got to look at what those people are, what they bring to you. So Facebook makes that super easy. Twitter or X is gotten increasingly more difficult and more challenging, but it's still possible for you to make authentic, true connections there. There are great people on there. There's also some bona fide psychopaths on there. I used to use their list mechanism and some of the tools and resources. Some of that stuff has gone away now that Elon's taken it over and there's a, a paid model. I just don't get it enough to say that I would want to pay money for it, but that's okay. Instagram, I will tell you how I use Instagram. There are several people, Melissa Knowles being one of them. Yvonne Nava, one of our local amazing morning show anchors. She and I have struck up a friendship and in we've been able to you know, really cultivate that pretty much exclusively through Instagram. She's been on the podcast. It was a, an amazing interview. People love it. But you know, she and I have this tendency to go back and forth on Instagram. And I like that. I love the fact that we are IG friends, right? But one of the tools and resources that I think is underlooked in Instagram is your ability to record a message. You can only record 60 seconds. But what I've actually found is I have used that in such a way to make a huge impact. I did this week to somebody who really makes a difference in a lot of ways in the world. And I just wanted her to know that. And so I sent a little voice memo. I just said, Hey, I, I'm, I wanted to share this with you. I just got off a call, which made me think of you. And when she got that voice memo, you would have thought I had just given her a million bucks, right? It was such a cool way to deposit. And because of that, she's more engaged in the pond because of what I'm doing to you know, you know, show her what I'm trying to do on my own to cultivate more connection. She's getting more involved, right? So I love Instagram. I love that video memo capability. TikTok, TikTok's just fun. TikTok is, you know, it's just, I mean, it's like that wild friend that didn't ever have to go home, right? You know, you know, you had curfew, but TikTok could get to just like, you know, 
drop you off on the curb and they're going out to the next cool party. I don't get it completely. I'm not a dancer. I'm not, I'm, I'm not super entertaining, but I've picked up a little bit of a loyal following on my job tips and my, you know, different things, but it's harder to make authentic, real connections there. So I've done less digital handshaking there. It's more from, I think, a pure content perspective. The other platforms that I look at, obviously LinkedIn, I'm, I'm, you know, you can go back and look at any of my videos or hear some of our past podcast episodes. I'm not a big fan of blind LinkedIn invitations, either making them or receiving them. I just don't like it. When it happens like that, I think a lot of people are turning LinkedIn to Facebook for business. And that's not the intent. Uh, when they started LinkedIn, it, it, the, they're trying to do too much on that platform in a lot of ways. And it has lost a little of its luster. I don't spend as much time. I may pay for the extended services on there, but I'm spending less and less time there. But it is a good way to go and see what people's work histories are. I mean, I use it more for, for research than I use for trying to authentically connect. And I really say that because I think most people are now immune to the, hey, I didn't or ask for or wasn't expecting your LinkedIn request or your message. And so they're, they, they push it off to the side. The effectiveness, and I'm not even sure in this upcoming year if I'll pay for the premium because really at the end of the day, I think even the premium users are tired of getting spammed by all the salesy, markety kind of people. But it has, and for some, it becomes the validation point of whether we are connected uh, authentically. This one person I was just mentioning a little while ago that, you know, we started the conversation via Twitter. We got on Zoom and now we're going to do this podcast, et cetera. The first thing she did was fire off a of LinkedIn. Um, and I'm okay with that. I will accept that because at the end of the day, I know where our Zoom went and I know the potential for this relationship. And as I've connected with her on LinkedIn, I see she puts out really great, genuine content. So it's easy to promote that and support her, which I've already done. And she's totally appreciated, right? So that's a deposit that is going to pay off down the road. Other, other platforms, obviously, that you can utilize. YouTube, I think I've got my favorites on a subscription. I've got people that I don't want to miss what videos they put out there. I may not know them personally. I may not be able to execute on a digital handshake, but I kind of feel like I'm in the know and I'm learning so much. YouTube is such a tremendous resource for figuring out so many things, but I also think that people fail to recognize it's the most essential thing for people that are putting out videos to get to know who that person is. Because a lot of the people that are out there are putting out content in such a way that gives you some really good insight as to who they are as people, right? How genuine they are, how authentic they are, or if they're just trying to be an influencer. And so I use that as kind of a, a monitoring mechanism for that as well. If somebody's not on YouTube, it's kind of interesting to ask them why, right? That becomes if you do get an opportunity to have a conversation, you know, and it's kind of funny because a lot of people have, have gone away from that platform as well. But I, I use it as just an opportunity to get a little additional insight, use it on a little bit more research. And so these communities are the ones that I really go to. But I, I nothing replaces electronically than face-to-face -face or human connection. And you may be, as I was mentioning this one person that's coming on my podcast, I mean, she's not even located where I'm at. But we got on the Zoom and we, you know, the distance doesn't even matter, right? At the end of the day, we are connecting. We got the ball rolling. There's some rippling happening. We didn't have to wait till we end up at a conference together. We didn't have to wait till we had coffee or lunch. We're able to do that. But this is the last bit of advice. And I know I'm you know, going on and on about this, but really at the end of the day, the digital handshake gets it started, but the relationship building efforts require you to play active role in making them happen right? Play an active role in making them happen. And what I mean by that is just because I followed you, I retweeted you, I you know, liked your posts, maybe we've had a good interaction. You still need to put in the work. You need to figure out how to take one conversation and turn it into another and another and another. And one of the ways that you do it is looking and finding ways to add value to them. How can you spread their message? How can you support them in their job search? How can you do whatever is important to them where you can gain some level of exposure for whatever is critical for them. When you can do that, when you take that effort and unprompted with no expectation of return, you're not charging for it. You are coming at it from a genuine perspective 
you will find that people will start to really become your fan. They want to know more about you. They want to know where they can contribute and add value to you, but it will take some time. I look at it from a perspective of an empty glass, right? Everything that you do, you're pouring a little bit more until you get that glass super full. And when you're super full, you can come back and say, let's both drink from this. Let's figure out. That may be a horrible analogy. I'm not sure. And now my coffee's gone cold. Come on, Walter. This this mug should keep keep it warm, man. Man, what's up? But the point being is that you're continually required to actually add to that cup, to keep filling, keep filling it until it gets full enough that somebody on the other side recognizes that you're not there because it's a strategy. You're not there because there's some sort of hidden Jedi mind trick that you're doing. You're there because you want to be there, because you're authentic, and you're a kind of person that they should and will want in their network, personal, professional, whatever, right? And so when you take it beyond that, you got to build the relationship the right way. You got to connect and engage. You got to keep doing things. As I told Melissa Knowles when we got off of our interview, I'd love to stay in touch. I'd love to keep having a conversation. And I don't think she said absolutely because she was being polite. I think that she knows that I can bring something to the table. She knows that I have a genuine interest in knowing her and seeing what I can do to create some positive ripples for her. And when you are willing to put that out there on the table, and this is where you can use exactly what we're teaching in the pond to do exactly that. Say, look, I want to play a positive role in helping you in some capacity, in some way, in some, you know, some obscure possibility. (laughs) People will be like, dude, that's awesome. You know, thank you. I appreciate it. And they may not necessarily give you the keys to the kingdom. They may not necessarily tell you how, but if you keep showing up and you keep asking, how can I help you? What can I do to contribute, add value, pay attention and listen to what they're telling you on every interaction and seeing if there are things that can benefit them and then just doing it, not with no expectation of return, with no game, you will find that there will be a positive, positive return on that investment. So anyway, as I think about this, you know, the digital handshake, how to leverage online communicate communities and unstoppable business growth. That's kind of probably going to be my title. I've got it written on the side here. So that's what I'm looking the digital handshake, leveraging online communities for unstoppable, unstoppable business growth. You probably ought to just change that to human growth, right? At the end of the day, you might be out there trying to figure out how to get your business to grow like this. But you don't really have to worry about the business going like this when you are out here going, where can I add value? How can I do what I need to do? How can I help the people that I'm coming in contact with? Let me show a little gumption by taking the time to try and reach out to these people on my own to actually try and set up opportunities for us to engage and get acquainted and get to know each other. And most importantly, not just do it once, but continue to find ways to build that connection into a trusted connection, trusted connection into a relationship and eventually that relationship into a trusted relationship. It takes time, takes energy, takes focus, and it takes your commitment to do it because everybody out there is busy. Everybody has many, many distractions. The more platforms you're on, the more distracted you are. And the reality is you're going to have to do something pretty darn special to set yourself apart from the rest of the herd. But I bet you can do it. I bet you can because you're a good rippler. You are someone who is willing to try things differently. You are someone who is going to think outside the box. You are someone who is going to make an impression and it's going to be a positive one because you are the authentic version of who you are. So that's it. I'm done. I need to go warm up this coffee. Cold coffee, this Italian roast, good stuff when it's cool. Not so much. I don't know. Clearly not a sponsor of this podcast, which is okay. That's fine. Yeah. What are you going to do? But guys, I hope some of that made sense. I hope you benefit from a few of the ramblings that I had. I highly encourage you to go to ripplecentral.com forward slash pond to check that out. I also would encourage you to go to just the website, ripplecentral.com and check out all of the great resources that we have available there. I'm on Substack for my blog, putting you know new posts out regularly. Obviously, you're tuned in here to the podcast, which I greatly appreciate. 
If you enjoy what we're sharing and these guests that I'm bringing to you, please do me a favor. Just let me beg you to do it. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like it where you can and promote it, share it. And if you'd be so kind, leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. I mean, that is one of the best things that you could possibly do for me. Or send me a review and we'll we'll feature you on our website at ripplecentral.com. So if you go and send me an email, steve at ripplecentral.com, that's super simple, right? Steve at ripplecentral.com. Tell me what you're taking from this show, what you enjoy, you know, what guests in the past that you've really, you know, learned something from. And we'll take that testimony or testimonial or review and we'll post it on our website. And uh, we'd love to hear from you as our audience. So send those to me. And on a side note, you know, you could just do a little dash, 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 and then go down below and go, Steve, this is what I want you to talk about. These are the guests I need you to look at. Here's somebody I'm reading or watching or whatever, paying attention to that I think would be ideal for uh, as a podcast guest. Now go ripple your way to it and prove, buddy, that you are a good rippler and can make it happen. And I will do that. I will absolutely go the distance. I will go the distance. Remember that from Field of Dreams? Uh, many of you young people are like, what's that? Kevin Costner, Yellowstone dude. He was he was he was in a great baseball movie before uh, he was uh, taking people to the train station with Rip. Uh, anyway, I hope he comes back for that final part of the season. It would just be a shame if he didn't. Anyway, I digress, and I should probably go get more coffee. So you guys take care. Go out there, make a difference in the world, make a difference in someone's life, and you will make a difference in your own life. Thank you, my friends, for being here, part of this podcast journey with me. I love you guys. I really do. Ripple on.